If it seems like the United States is getting more heavy storms and major floods these days, it's because we are. The last year has been no exception. Hello, I'm Amanda Stout, climate scientist for the National Wildlife Federation. The latest research is showing a clear connection between the changing climate and increased flooding risk. Let's look at some recent examples. In June 2008, floods on the Cedar, Illinois, Missouri, and Mississippi rivers left hundreds of thousands of people displaced across the Midwest. This flood was the second 500-year flood in just 15 years and racked up more than $15 billion in damages. In January 2009, floods in the Pacific Northwest caused $125 million of damage and the evacuations of more than 30,000 people. In March, brought record high levels on the Red River bordering North Dakota and Minnesota, following an unusually wet fall and winter. Fargo narrowly averted a major disaster through a massive effort to build temporary sandbag levees and to evacuate thousands of people. Global warming is partly to blame for these heavy rainfall events. Warmer air simply can hold more moisture, so heavier precipitation is expected in the years to come. This combined with shifts in snowfall patterns and the earlier onset of spring may all exacerbate flooding risks. Development in floodplains and our attempts to control rivers compound the risk of flood damage. The realization that the future will bring more rain and more flooding risk means that we must make better choices about how we manage flood prone areas. Grand Forks, North Dakota has done just that. After devastating floods in 1997, the city took the bold action of buying out hundreds of properties in the floodplain and converting the land to parks and habitat areas. They installed new grass-covered levees and removable flood walls well back from the river's edge. This allows more space for the river to swell as it would under natural conditions. This common-sense plan worked for the people of Grand Forks. None of the major floods in recent years have caused significant damage to the city and they have acres of new parkland and habitat to enjoy. Now is the time to confront the realities of global warming, including the increasing frequency and intensity of heavy rainfall, the early onset of spring and its rapid snowmelt. We must aggressively move towards a cleaner energy future and reduce global warming pollution, thus avoiding its worst impacts. And finally, we need to reduce the risks to riverfront communities. Important steps include discouraging development in flood-prone areas and protecting the natural systems such as wetlands that help to buffer against floods. For more information, please visit nwf.org slash extreme weather. There you can see my series of connecting the dots reports on how global warming is affecting our weather and environment.